from the archive. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the third channel. Welcome to from the archive today. Today's from the archive is a little bit different, right? What we've got is got some footage that I've edited. Oh, <gasps> but that's not from the archive, y'all. Well, I need to make more family. I want to show you the archive footage, but. I have to make it more family friendly. So what we're going to show you is Rick Mail, the comedian and actor. Right, he was on Wogan, which it was Terry Wogan's show. But this episode was hosted by Claudia Hollyford. Yeah, and the reason why she's hosted it is because there was a few episodes where Wogan, Terry Wogan, weren't available, so they got Claudia Hollyford. This is from 1991. First of all, I'm sorry that the quality isn't that great. Well, this quality isn't as great as the BBC Archive one they're sharing at the moment. But this one has been recorded from someone's VHS. Second of all, I have edited it to make it more family friendly. So I've bleeped some swear words and I've cut out some segments when they show a clip from Bottom. Which was the programme he was promoting at the time. Um, so... Hopefully you enjoy that. Are you ready? Here we go. This is Claudia Huddersford hosting The Wogan Show. Guest starring uh, towards the end of the episode. Rick Mayo. Welcome to From the Archive. Enjoy. Because I know I will. Time to act. Bye. Enjoy. I will be here for the next bit return from there. Now, he's presented us with Kevin Turvey and Rick from The Young Ones or Captain Flashheart and Black Adder or indeed Alan Bastard in The New Statesman and now Drop Dead Fred, an imaginary friend of the character played by Phoebe Cates. Morning! So, who's the snot flicking? <laughs> I hid all night in the stupid garden shed and you didn't even bother coming to look for me! Oh my god! Is it? It is! Spit me at her! Is this for me? Get me an axe! No, no, get me a chainsaw! I'm gonna slice her into tiny pieces! Mother, I, are you going to be doing any gardening today? Well, it is a lovely day for us. <laughs> <laughs> the death breath! <laughs> she killed me with the death breath! <laughs> Be gone, evil one! Hey, maybe there's a stake in there. We can drive it right through her heart. <laughs> <laughs> Will you welcome star of stage, screen, and the forthcoming BBC sitcom, inevitably called Bottom. Who else could it be? Rick Mayall. <laughs> I haven't got the foggiest idea what you were doing in the fridge. Um, sorry, I kicked the mic. Uh, you can put your feet up on the table. Can I? Like. Yes, of course. Thanks, Terry. You He's look fab tonight. Snob, you normally are. <laughs> no, you actually missed the best. The best bit from that clip was. Um, That's the story of my was, life. Was, I always yeah. miss the best bit. Miss the best bit. Yeah, not tonight, baby. <laughs> True. Uh, yeah, the best bit uh, in that clip is just afterwards um, when uh, when I'm pulling my head out of the fridge and, uh, and it finally goes <laughs> and all comes out and it's big and flat and wide like that and it took about. You talk about, um, <laughs> you add. <laughs> talk about 12 hours of prosthetic makeup. And, uh, I must say, Fred looked a bit like Rick, didn't he? He's kind of similar, yeah. Yeah. Um, in the, Rick was very, Rick was very childish. Um, and Fred <laughs> is as well. Uh, but he's imaginary. Yes. <gasps> but glad to be back. You couldn't live over there, could you? I don't think so, no. Yeah. Nice to visit. Good fun. Anyway, you're, you're very mature now. You're a married man with two children and yes. grown up, all of that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so much so that you have made a, a new series with your friend, Aid Edmondson, yes. called Bottom. Actually, we, if I remember, saw quite a lot of yours in The Young Ones. You saw my bottom? I did. In The Young Ones. <laughs> I have shown my bottom on telly. It was in a play years ago called... Uh, oh, God, I can't remember what it's called. But I did show my bottom. And uh, I went to a party that Jennifer Saunders and Dawn French had. 
and they got the little bit where I went into the shower and you saw my bottom, and they had this, somehow they fixed the video so my bottom was going in and out of the shower <laughs> on these screens for the whole party. <laughs> so why did you call this new series Bottom? It's called Bottom because, because uh, that's a stupid name, and also because Aid and I, it's about two guys living on the bottom of the heap. Uh, and basically it's back to the old stuff we haven't written together for a long time. Um, and it's back to the old just uh, fighting jokes. And it's like, it's kind of like the young ones, but it's only the two of us. But, it, but in a way, like for example, with the New Statesman, I thought that you had moved on to a different level of humour. Do you not think in a way this is a backward step going no. back to the young ones type? No, humor? no, it's, it's a progression within that direction, if you see what I mean. Um, it's, it's, Aid and I have worked together for, what, 76, 15, 15 years. And, uh, it's a development. We're a double act that will stay together for, forever. I think you two are married, actually. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's just a progression for us. It's also uh, a long time since we've written it. Since the Dangerous Brothers, since we've written anything together. Um, I'm very happy with that. I've only actually seen two, but obviously I was there for the recording. Um, and um, <laughs> you're sort of biased. <laughs> yeah, I'm very happy with the way they went down. I have to say, I love Alan Bastard, and I often think it must be marvelous to be able to hide behind a character like that, say all the nasty things you want to say. Yes, I mean. Alan wasn't, was kind of my creation with Lawrence Marks and Maurice Grant. It, it was just me. So in that sense, because I normally have something to do with the writing of anything I do, um, which I didn't so much on, uh, on The Statesman, but we did invent it together. But, uh, I mean, we've done three series of that now. It's gone very well. But the last time we did it, <laughs> was, uh, um, we just finished all the scripts, just finished them, and uh, we recorded one, and Thatcher resigned. So all the scripts were out of date overnight. <laughs> I mean, none of us are particularly uh, conservative orientated, but we were all going, oh no, she's resigned! Come back, Mags! <laughs> has, has Alan got used to John Major yet? Uh, well, that was the problem we had, you see. I mean, luckily, I got so happy that night that I fell downstairs and dislocated my shoulder. <laughs> it's true, I was dancing on the stairs and I fell down. And so I was out of action for three weeks, which was really lucky because uh, we were able to rewrite. So then we thought, great, okay, who's the Prime Minister? John Major. What, who is he? What does he do? What's he like? It's a nervous, he's kind of grey guy, you know? Nobody knows anything about him. <laughs> and they had such trouble... They found one good joke, which because, you know, his parents used to be in the circus, and they said he's the only child in history. I'm not saying he's boring, but he's the only child in history to run away from the circus to join a firm of accountants. It's <laughs> <laughs> quite good. But, um, but I mean, is now it like... we know him deeply. We know he goes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. <laughs> is it likely we might see Alan, you know, at Lords with John, do you think? Or at the opera with Norma? What do you think? It would be good, but, the th I mean, we're not going to take the risk again and write a load of scripts until he tells me, until he phones me when the election's going to be, tells me what the result he's decided on is going to be. <laughs> I agree with you. I would just and stick then we'll to that commit, policy. commit yes. to the top writer, you know? I would. I'd stick yeah. to that if I were you. Listen, you mentioned waiting for Goddard with aid with yes. your husband again. With my husband, yes. Uh, yes. And that's not the first time, in fact, uh, that you performed it, because w weren't you eight or something when you did a, a production with your father? Yeah, my dad directed it when I was little. Hello, Dad. Hello, Dad. Um, and I did it again at school, and uh, we did it a couple of times at university. I've never played Vladimir before, uh, but it's a very good lineup. There's me, and there's Aid playing Estragon of Vladimir. Then there's uh, Chris Ryan playing, playing Lucky. Uh, Phil Jackson playing Pozzo, uh, Derek Jarman's designing it, uh, and Les, Be Les Blair's directing it. Are you so sure you've mentioned all of them now? Yeah, there's Sam Beckett, obviously, <laughs> wrote the gags, you know. <laughs> but uh, it's a pretty good lineup. Um, that's why I'm so brain dead, because it, it's just a really complicated, it's a very funny play, but it's really complicated to learn. So I've been with Aid all afternoon trying to learn. This. Well, it's a great period for you. You've got your new film, you've got the new telly series, and yeah. going into the West End. Now, would you like to say goodnight as Rick, or as Alan Bastard, or Fred, or who? Which camera am I on? You? Ah, hello. I'll see you later, matey. Right. <laughs> Goodbye from me. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> shall I? I don't get complaints, Louis. Put it on my sleeve, that's okay. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Rick, it's been tremendous fun having you on the programme. Thank you very much. It was, it was really good. <laughs> Rick Mayo. Thank you. join me on Wednesday. Ooh. I'm not exactly sure who's going to be turning up because his friend of mine, Lenny Henry, is going to be here and you know what that means. But there'll also be terrific music from Simply Red. And if you've enjoyed tonight's programme, my name is Gloria Honeyford. And if you haven't, then it's Esther Ranson. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>